Can you see my slide? Okay. Yeah, okay, that's good. Mm. Okay, thank you very much for inviting uh, me to this uh, symposium. My name is Hiroyuki Obari. And today I'd like to talk about the impact of virtual online learning uh, during COVID-19. And this is our statue, uh, John Wesley. Uh, that's uh, you know, the most important statue in our university. More or less, uh, this statue has a lot to do with the Dominus Illuminati of Air. I will explain this later because that's my you know, purpose to tell uh, you the, today's story. It's a sort of a grander story of my academic life. My outline, uh, this is my outline. Uh, my, uh, my presentation is divided into nine sections. First, paradigm shift. Second, history of AI and society 5.0 and 21st century skills. And first case study before the COVID-19 using AI speaker. And third case studies uh, during the COVID-19 and future education summary and conclusion. Okay. <clears throat> Now, uh, I made two research questions. First research question is, how to integrate 21st century skills into education? The second question is, how to train uh, the higher order thinking skills? And now uh, we are moving toward a sort of a society 5.0. Maybe like now it is between the society 4.0 and the society 5.0. And the society 5.0 is the integration of cyberspace and physical space. And so the older economic development and social problems uh, seem to be solved by computer algorithm. Computer algorithm is very important. It's a sort of a data-driven society. That is why we are now facing a sort of a paradigm shift because of the advancement of ICT or mobile technologies and the cloud environment. We can engage in seamless learning anytime, anywhere for 24 hours now. Also the third most important thing is the artificial intelligence and big data and IOT plus COVID-19. And uh, here, history by AI. Uh, it, it takes about uh, more than uh, 20 minutes. I gave a presentation together with my colleague at the child conference. So I sent you the video link for this, you know, so I will skip this part. And I will just explain what the super society 5.0 is. The super smart uh, society turned out to be paved with an important role for technologies such as the internet of things, AI, artificial intelligence, cyber physical system, VR, AR, ML, mixed reality, big data. The advancement of uh, you know, uh, learning analytics is very important nowadays for learning English. You know. So the teacher's role totally have changed. Teacher used to teach a lot and then uh, get some feedback with a student or just uh, assess the student performance. But it's entirely you know, changed now. I think a student, I mean, the teacher has to be a facilitator and we have to know what's going on around the world also where we can find out the nice links and whatever, just so the curator. And then uh, finally the mentor, how are we going to supervise the student? You know? And the lot, now let me move on to the 21st century skills, higher order thinking skills. As you know, the, this uh, you know, uh, idea came out early 21st century, uh, three hours and seven C's. And if you look at the seven C's, uh, critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, innovation, collaboration, teamwork, leadership, and cross-cultural understanding, but in this section, I'd like to really emphasize the importance of a worldviews. You know, what is your belief? You know, what you believe in? Do you are you an atheist or are you a you know monotheist and or you, you are an evolutionist or creationist? I will talk about it later. And then the communication and media literacy, computing IT literacy, career learning, and self reliance. You totally agree with these seven C's, but I think I will add one more C. It's a sort of a coexistence with AI because of the advancement of AI, big data, and IoT. And the, as you know, the Carl Kurzweil is a very famous scholar in the field of AI, and he predicts uh, AI is going to reach the singularity by 2045. And the Osborne, the professor of Oxford, I think I listened to his lecture uh, several times over there, and 48% present types of job will disappear these jobs will be more or less integrated to the AI-related jobs. 
And also the famous historian, uh, he wrote the uh, Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. Harari predict the people will be divided into two camps. Two camps mean uh, one is just you're going to control the AI uh, by computer algorithm. You'll be totally in charge. Other party will be just you'll be used by AIs. It might, might be you know, the sort of a slave of uh, AI. So the, I think we uh, nowadays the teachers have a heavy responsibility to teach, teach the student how to use AI, how to experience uh, uh, you know, or AI. And here the Kurzweil described his law of accelerating returns, which predicts an exponential increase in technology like computers, genetics, robotics, and artificial intelligence. And once the singularity has been reached by 2045, machine intelligence will be infinitely more powerful than all human intelligence combined. And the his prediction is uh, 2021, right now, AI deal with big data respond to us without feeding. Uh, AI has a different kind of feeding. And if you use a smart speaker, it's just uh, artificial you know, or voice and feeding. So of course we can interact, or we can carry out some very co uh, complicated discourse. And to, by 2030, AI teacher will be available to teach and deal individually with the development of each student in learning, like a learning analytics. About uh, two years ago, I think we invited the Professor Ngata, he's an expert in this field, and he's doing some extensive research in Kyoto area, uh, targeting many junior and high school students to develop this, uh, you know, or AI, AI teachers and whatever. And then 2045, by 2045, singularity may, may be going to take place. So it will be like humans, really. But here we have to think about what makes us humans. Okay, uh, Cartswell, MIT, buses, Tarasenko, Oxford. So just I will introduce the one important event. Uh, I often go to Oxford every uh, year, March and also in summer. I used to be a visiting scholar several times and the, I attended the DCM conference. DCM stand for developing a Christian mind conference, just like this. Uh, we had a DCM conference uh, New College, uh, 2019, okay? And this is a Professor Tarasenko. Uh, he's now the leading thinker or scholar in the field of AI, and he established a sort of AI college in Oxford. And also he is the head of a computer science department, but he's a really special uh, fellow. And he invented the jet engine, you know, regulation of jet engines. Uh, that is the most important work. And also he's now developing uh, the sort of a medical you know, or treatment with using AI. And I asked uh, Professor Tarasenko uh, after his uh, keynote lecture, and just I brought up the issue of uh, singularity, just like uh, Katzweil mentioned. And uh, Professor Tarasenko, AI is gonna be like human. That's what the, uh, you know, uh, uh, Katzweil predicts. What do you think about the future AI? And the, you know, of course, uh, he said, uh, AI is going to be functioning like humans. However, that his answer is, then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. You know? So that's his answer. If the God, you know, or breathes the AI, and is the AI going to be like humans? That's his answer. Okay, he's a sort of a creationist. Okay, excuse me. I don't know. Sorry, uh, it stopped. Okay, so then how to teach online classes to find out the new discovery? And uh, whenever we find out the new discovery, ontology and epistemology, those two keywords are very important. Ontology is just things in exist independently. And then the epistemology is just a sort of how we're gonna aware of what's going on around us. You know? So the, those two terms are very important. And then how we're going to train the student higher order thinking skills. And I brought up the Broom's digital taxonomy. And in Japan, I think we seem to focus on the lower level of thinking from level one to level three. However, the university, uh, in order to find out something new, 
we have to really focus on from level four to level six, means how we're going to teach, uh, you know, uh, higher order thinking skills. Higher order thinking skills should be emphasized, analysis, evaluation, and creation. And when we, you know, refer to the creation of our critical thinking, metaphysics, metaphysics is very important. And uh, so now let me introduce the case study one. Uh, before the COVID-19, uh, I didn't put down this uh, on the abstract, but uh, that's a very important part. So I will include uh, in this talk. And the use of AI smart speaker and VR, the third year economic major student, and my philosophy in education is language is the worldview. And I, I really want to tell the student to develop student way of thinking, worldviews, and uh, you have to find out who you are, identity. And the second one is to acquire 21st century skills plus experience AI. And third one is to acquire more cross-culturally sensitive understanding by ICT COIL, uh, Collaborative Online International Learning, and finally, to improve English proficiency and presentation skills. Uh, this is my class. Uh, my student uh, usually use uh, Google iPad and the Alexa or Google Home Mini. Okay, uh, they've been using all the time. And this is how the students are engaged in. My classroom is very busy, and I often invite many, many uh, foreign uh, students to my class. You know, uh, this is a sort of a flip learning you know, style. And the, I usually use uh, Facebook, also the course power as a LMS. I uploaded all the teaching or learning materials on the Facebook and the uh, videos and other links. But as far as the LMS is concerned, the uh, university LMS is concerned, you know, the, they uh, let us allow, uh, you know, let us uh, upload about uh, only the five mega. What can we do with the five megabyte, you know? Only you have to find out the links and the YouTube links and whatever. But uh, if you use a uh, Facebook, you can upload very heavy files. You know that's why I decided to use. I've been using this for almost ten years. So the student download from the you know LMS, like just like a Facebook, uh, he, he the student could you uh, make a PowerPoint slide uh, or do some essay writing. But uh, in essay writing, I often uh, you know, allow the student to use a Grammarly or DPL or a uh, Trinka. I sent some link. Uh, Trinka is a very advanced, uh, you know, uh, software to check uh, check your uh, English mistakes. You know, it's not perfect, but still, I think a Trinka might be better than Grammarly. It's uh, entirely free. You know? And so after they, they download the materials, uh, I gave some specific assignments, so they have to prepare the PowerPoint slides, and then they have to do some recording and then uh, you know, upload with the MP4 files. The classroom mainly, I put much emphasis upon the interaction, discussion, and presentation, and Q and a and assessment. And after that, and the, if the student happened to find out some mistakes on the slide and whatever, they have to do some correction and then upload to the Facebook again. So this is a sort of a learning circle. And the, the Professor Thomas Loeb, he invented the PIVL, so I've you know, been using this PIVL for all classes. Uh, student could be more engaged in the presentation and activities if we use this uh, present software. PIVL is very powerful. And so this is a sort of a, a crowd learning environment, flipped learning, or mainly the student challenge, the challenge-based learning or project-based learning, or sometimes problem uh, solving uh, learning and then task-based learning. So I drew the a clear distinction, uh, you know, what the student could learn outside the class and the, also what, uh, how are they, they are going to engage in, in the inside the class. This year, the, I've been using the Zoom, okay? And the, uh, now uh, Amazon Lex is available free of charge and the, we used to buy the Amazon Alexa, but with a smartphone, you can download this software and then you can use or you can interact, you know. Okay, so this is a Facebook. And I carried out some experiment uh, in 2019, April to 2000, uh, January the 20, 2020 for 10 months. And they use the Google VR 
and the, uh, they mainly used at home and they encouraged to use daily. And they took a pre-test and a pre and post-test and the pre and post OPIC speaking test. And then they took uh, survey questions. Mainly uh, AI speakers have many, many applications. I would say that uh, Alexa has more and they, they are obliged to record the short movie clips sometime when they are engaged in learning about one minute and then upload to the Facebook. Also, they uh, encourage them to keep written diaries with their observation about the contents and duration of their uh, studies. And uh, also students gave many, many presentations about their experiment of using BR and AR at the end of the semester. Actually, and I let them use the, those uh, complicated technologies. So they have to set up some research questions and they're based upon the previous study and they uh, set up some certain hypothesis. And for 10 months, they have to carry out a sort of experimental research, you know. And then at the end of the semester, uh, they gave us a presentation in English. The kind of software application they used uh, as follows, like a Google verse, a VLS, best teacher, travel English. Let's play around with English. This is more or less interactive. BBC, CNN News, TOEIC practice. And let's speak. This one is also very interactive. And the, through this, uh, you know, course, uh, I asked a question at the end of the course: Did you learn 21st century skills and importance of AI through this uh, seminar? Uh, about 97 percent, they said yes. Did you improve your critical thinking skills? Uh, I think uh, about 100 percent. You know, the result of TOEIC and OPIC speaking tests, just I will show you. There, there used to be an improvement of about 150 points, you know, before uh, introducing the AI speaker. But uh, uh, this year, after they used the AI speaker, the, their mean score, a TOEIC score, went up, uh, CEPA A2 level to CEPA B2 level, about uh, 215 points. About the two thirds of the student, usually uh, they, you know, study so hard, they, you know, uh, got more than 850, you know, even in the official score. And then the OPIC speaking test, it's about 0.83 improvement. This is, a, there are eight bounds, you know, bounds here. Okay, so from A2 to B1, not so bad. Okay, from uh, 3.91 to 4.74. And also another uh, experiment I carried out is AI, speaker versus non-AI uh, no, uh, classes. And they, just for 10 months, one class that they used uh, about 30 students, they used the AI speaker for 10 months. The non-AI uh, class, instead of using AI speaker, they highly engaged in the e-learning. But other than that, the other pedagogy is exactly the same. And if you look at the score, AI class improved about 197 points pre and post. And the non-AI class improved only 151 points. So AI class, if they use the AI speaker, this class seemed to out, you know, perform better than the non-AI classes, okay? Uh, now, let me move on to the English education with COVID-19. And the, my, you know, uh, goal is just integrate ICT, AI, worldviews and English. And second case study is the, at the Tokyo Institute of Technology Graduate School. I've been teaching there for almost 10 years, especially for master's and PhD student. And the, here, uh, last uh, year, 2020, uh, first time, the PhD student 20 and MS student four. Online live lessons and I uh, let them use, I let them read uh, three articles on Facebook, download and make PPT slide for presentation. And I invited some uh, professor weekly from the United States on, uh, to this online lecture about global leadership, worldviews, and cross-cultural issue, like a cross-cultural uh, CQ uh, quotient, you know. And then uh, I used the MPEG-4 movies, uh, YouTube, and other things. Mainly, they're highly engaged in the presentation of the breakdown, uh, breakout room, Q&A, and then assessment. Uh, so, uh, Assessment uh, performance with PIML, six categories that uh, they really focused on, you know, to improve their presentation. And so, uh, cloud learning environments uh, again here, but here the Zoom. And the Dr. E is teaching the worldviews, especially he's a theologian, uh, she's a theologian in Oxford. 
And I listened to his lecture about 25 years ago and I invited her to come to our university twice. And the, also, uh, this is a very important iceberg model, the E.T. Edward T. Hall in 1976. And we tend to focus on only the surface culture, uh, tradition, customs, and behavior because those areas are observable. However, uh, when we think about the deep and shallow culture, uh, we cannot see, we cannot observe. That's why it has a lot to do with the worldviews. Also, you have to really, you know, or see or think. Uh, you know, even though those are invisible. And it, it, so the, now the next concept is very important. According to Professor Lom Halley, uh, he passed away about two years ago. Uh, he's a very famous scholar in the field of uh, science and uh, theology, philosophy, you know, philosopher of science. And he indicated in his uh, concept of, uh, you know, ontology and epistemology, uh, the things belong to three areas, you see, and sometimes by observation, uh, if the things could be identified or perceived, for example, uh, you know, if you look at, you know, or you look at the things around you, you can see and observe and touch and feel, right? Uh, so that's a area one. The realm two is, uh, let's say, the if you look you know, the coronavirus, you cannot see, right? But uh, once you become a coronavirus, uh, corona, uh, COVID-19, you suffer. Your body function will be not so normal, right? And so if you use a particular technology or instrument like a telescope or a microscope, uh, sometimes you can observe this area. Th those things belong to number two, right? Uh, by analogy, you can find out this, or if you use a special instrument. But the but the things, you know, the truth is there is more to it. The realm three is most important. Things cannot be observed and perceived with technology or particular instrument. And like a Professor Kosiba, Nobel laureate, uh, he invented the many, many instruments to catch up, you know, to catch the most important uh, phenomena or uh, core. And uh, he assumed, I think, there seemed to be some physical important thing, you know, even though we cannot observe. And uh, so far, we cannot, uh, you know, really uh, detect or uh, we cannot lead the truth in it, you know. But by using some, uh, you know, uh, technology or uh, instrument, he happened to catch some important phenomena because uh, he's really paying attention to Liam Three. Now, what I really want to say is the new discovery usually, you know, occur. Uh, when the things discovered in the from the Liam area uh, in the Liam three area, and then get down to the Liam two, so that's where the high order thinking you know is very uh, training is very important. I often uh, apply this principle uh, to teach the high order thinking skill for the student. You know? I think. Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is a professor Lom Hale, and the, I, uh, you know, uh, I send that student the article "What is Scientific Realism?" and his, you know, uh, lecture. I think uh, you can listen to his lecture. I gave you the link. I send you the link later on. You can uh, watch and hit YouTube. And uh, just I will show you a uh, DPhil student from India. After he, you know, uh, participated in my seminar and also after he studied the worldviews and scientific realism, yeah. As we saw earlier, a large part of purpose is shaped by your worldviews. And how you see the world has a very non-trivial impact on what role you think you play in it. Comparing my understanding of this with Dr. E's second model, I think that as we go from realm one to realm three of scientific realism, we need to learn new things about ourselves that we must apply to our daily pursuit of the truth of reality. And only then can we proceed successively from one to three. If you look at the diagram on the left, you can see my interpretation of Dr. E's second model. I think that once you obtain a result in your research that lies in realm one, you need to reflect on what led to that result and the fallacies that you committed while walking down that path. In order to raise your level of thinking from realm one to realm three, you need to dive deeper into the subject, which of course requires more mental effort than what you already took. 
as you perform the process of deeper understanding your world views also become clear and you see the pillars of reality knowledge and morality on which a world view is founded with more clarity the fig- so the this uh, a gentleman he's working for the phd at the tokyo institute of technology and uh, he just uh, paid attention to liam sri elia and then uh, invented his uh, special method uh, to find out some new discovery you know he set up some hypothesis you no know, okay and the another thing is just i often invite some uh, another scholar uh, thomas uh, uh, weekly from the united states he mainly talks about uh, cross cultural issues and global leadership and it, uh, you know uh, last year uh, before covid-19 i invited him to my classroom and he's highly emphasizing sort of a development of intercultural sensitivity from denial to integration adaptation so i encourage my student to target adaptation this area acceptance and adaptation and the cq you know the your cap- capability to function effectively in the intercultural context national ethnic and organizational cultures and he said 70% of international ventures fail because of cultural differences you know so the globalization of our world requires us to develop cq and understand world view to find out the new discovery from the m3 area okay and third case study is uh, at the agu and the waseda i've been teaching also at the waseda for oh, about 10 years this is a sort of a cbl challenge based learning and all uh, i just apply this principle uh, to my classroom also and the almost the same thing they have to you know uh, download from the facebook and at this time you know student have to make a sort of a you know a free grid video okay and the links uh, i also send you this links you know oxford there is a very famous uh, link there that uh, in each institute uh, they are uh, doing some most advanced research even oxford martin school oxford internet institute if you are keen on just you can look at and then click this uh, you can uh, encounter many many exciting things and the uh, oxford side business school I, w- i went to the oxford side business school to listen to the lecture i was so surprised at the entrance uh, at the side business school and the, there is a latin you know dominus illuminatio mea that's uh, oxford university side business school's motto as well and the, you know the richard dawkins he's very famous even in japan but he's promote promoting a sort of a evolution but there is another counterpart arista maglas uh he's a creationist and the, he's really you know the a sort of expert for science and theology and there's been many many debates like uh, richard dawkins and arista maglas okay also the uh, you know the top of the canterbury cathedrals you know so this is a oxford martin school So Oxford Martin School is dealing with environment, health and society and economics. So the my student uh, you know they are uh, assigned to do some uh, new discovery and they so they have to choose any interesting uh, subject in each field and then they're going to look look at they read the articles and then they learn, download a video they listen to the youtube and then they have to uh, you know set up some own uh, some certain problems. and they also uh, they have to do some uh, you know research uh, research question research methodology and then the uh, you see process of discussion and then uh, come to the sort of a research findings you know that's a sort of a project i always emphasize uh, for my student you know uh, in this classroom uh, in the virtual learning uh, professor weekly uh, gave us a lecture and also the ccs member ccs members uh, they uh, ccs stand for uh, campus crusade for christ and they often uh, came to my classroom at, at least once a month and the, i divided my student into you know uh, about six groups and uh, when the ccs uh, six members uh, came to class so each one of the breakout room uh, the stu- three to one uh, you know or ccs passes three japanese students they could interact they could uh, give a presentation so the ccs they're the expert in english uh, language uh, some native speakers 
so they can check, they could listen to the presentation and they assess and they interact, you know. And sometimes what is most important in the interaction is just to talk about the cultural difference, the worldviews, you know. All of them are Christians. They have a Christian, Judeo Christian, uh, Christian worldviews. However, many Japanese people believe in millions of God, none, uh, I would say, the atheist, you know. So that's why the discussion seemed to be very uh, influential. Uh, this gentleman is a, he's a leader. Uh, kind of people that are connected in over 200 countries. And so, uh, yeah, lots of different cultures and lots of different, um, yeah, people with, you know, different experiences. And so today, especially this month, uh, we wanted to kind of take a look at Christmas. And so within our organization, we have people from different countries in Japan, um, within this class, America and Singapore. And so we wanted to share a little bit about um, what do we and how do we think and experience and celebrate Christmas? Yeah, just like this. And also the flip grid, you know, after they listen to uh, or after they made a presentation about, uh, you know, or from Oxford Martins, some issues. And uh, they always have to make a, you know, a presentation with a flip grid as well, okay? And uh, just, uh, I will show this one. Uh, maybe we have still time. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shuhei Onuma from Aoyama Gakuin University major in economics. And from now on, I'll give, I will give a presentation about what I learned in this seminar for two years. As I said, it's been about two years since I entered this seminar. And in the process so far, I have done various tasks, such as presentations related to AI, presentations in Singapore, ATR called BRICS, TED Talks, and special lectures by Professor Weekly. What to, gay, what to get may vary from student to student, but I will pick up and present what I have learned that I personally find important. This is my outline and my presentation is divided into nine parts. First, two ways of learning. Second, presentation. Third, attractive way of speaking. Uh, it's about uh, 10 minutes, you know, they have to always give a presentation reflecting upon what they learned. Okay, sorry. And the uh, okay, uh, sorry, uh, excuse me, overlap, you know. And the fourth uh, case study is uh, sort of a coil and the international exchange with the National University of Singapore. And my student enjoyed the exchange program, and they have been conducting this program for 10 years. But this year, uh, 2020, uh, I couldn't take them to Singapore, so we had a sort of a virtual exchange. And the, you know, when I took them to Singapore, about 70 uh, national uh, NUS students uh, interacted with us, 19 Japanese students. You know. I took them to NUS, also APEC and other international institutions. But this year, uh, we decided to carry out a sort of a coil for eight weeks, uh, this is a Professor Izumi Woka. Uh, she is a Japanese teacher at NUS. For eight weeks, uh, uh, we see we had a sort of a joint seminar uh, on a virtual, you know, on, on breakout session, and the 19 student versus 19 Japanese student. Uh, these uh, students are divided into five groups, and they uh, targeted many issues, and they. Every week they got together on online breakout session and they discussed uh, okay? And there are different uh, five topics. And then uh, they spent about eight weeks uh, before uh, they did the main presentation. On the November the 10th uh, last year, uh, it took about uh, three hours. Uh, we had a sort of a joint seminar presentation about 100 students, also teachers, uh, you know, came to our online session. And the 19 Singaporean students, they gave a pr presentation about what they researched for the past eight weeks. Whereas our Japanese student, you know, uh, 
when we, the Japanese student would like to you know, uh, study English, that's why the, they targeted the, these four uh, topics uh, to achieve SDGs or how to survive with COVID-19 or AI and society and Japan's modern problems. And then they gave a presentation. And the, I listened to several lecture or conference uh, lecture and the, maybe the, after we had an exchange and the Professor Suzuki suggested, we should have a sort of a digital text together, even uh, you know, with COIL. So the a product, the digital text COIL uh, text will be really good. Maybe in the future, uh, for, for the future exchange, I'd, I'd like to try you know, digital text. And the PIBL, the, I, I'm very thankful to Professor uh, Thomas Law. He's an expert in this field. And the uh, assessment with a smartphone during a presentation is very useful. This guy is uh, giving a presentation and the another guy could uh, you know, assess his performance. And uh, once the presentation is done automatically, you see, uh, assess uh, six uh, items. And then uh, once you uh, finish a presentation, you could look at and uh, compare with other people and the what is a weakness you can find out easily. And the assessment, the pre-test, post-test, assessment presentation with PAVAL, MPEG-4 movie product and presentation reflection, uh, how much the student engaged in. I try to catch up, you know, the student advancement using a for, or portfolio. And the, if you use a, this a PIL, uh, you know, feedback, and it's easy to, you know, uh, see the quick feedback is the most important advantage, you know. And the many students, uh, you know, they thought it was very useful for presentation. And the, coming back to the questionnaire uh, about uh, COVID-19, and flipped learning helps students to improve English proficiency with PBL and CBL project, uh, about 76.3 among the 90, 80 students, you know. And interaction with CCS, CCC, uh, Campus Crusade for Christ, help you to improve your English proficiency, of course, 80%, you know. And what about uh, to be more motivated to study English, 76.7 and help you to change your worldviews or own belief, about 62 point. Uh, so more or less my students who interacted with the CCS, they tend to be more open-minded. And also they learn the importance of 21st century skills and AI with this Zoom lesson. And the breakout session was very useful in uh, interaction in learning EFL. And so the cultural language exchange like a coil help you to learn the world views and cross-cultural communication and cultural and language exchange with NUS help you to improve your English proficiency. Okay, and then now move on to the uh, coexistence with DL and physical reality. And uh, I think uh, this is a very useful uh, tool, uh, like even during the COVID-19. And now the smart glass, only the 150 gram, it uh, seem to be uh, coming now, okay. And the immerse English education, that's a very important you know, platform. And he's now, this company is promoting uh, how the student could learn English with a VR, okay? So AI and the education in the future is, first AI assisting human education, and also AI augments human education, and AI education assisted by humans, and the AI completely substitute for human education. It's a sort of a hybrid learning. So it depends on how our AI is going to be more progressing in the future. But what I'm saying, what I really want to emphasize is the, maybe if you alone, you could engage uh, in learning with AI speakers and whatever. However, that we have to emphasize the sort of uh, interaction, just like always I invite some foreign speaker to my class, the student could uh, engage in discussion and interaction to talking about or to find out the, who you are, the identity and worldviews, you know. So integration is a key word. And now for the uh, English education for the future is collaboration, AI plus humans, VR, AR, or ML, hybrid and coil. And the, before I about to, about, I'm about to finish my presentation, John Dewey once said, if we teach today, as we taught yesterday, 
we are depriving our children of tomorrow. Well, I'm so scared, you know. And the technology we have to at our finger trips can help us to become those memorable teachers of tomorrow, okay? And so to sum up my uh, presentation, education for the 21st century skills, hybrid and pre-planning, and we have to emphasize higher order thinking skills and the integration of human plus AI and DL and collaboration so the student could become autonomous learners. And the Domina Sereminatium here, I'd like to explain. It means the Lord is my light, okay? That's taken from Psalm 27. And the, for me, the Domina Sereminatio is a life, meaning, uh, uh, you know, this word helped me to find out the real purpose of my life and hope, okay? And the, after I encountered this word, my life has, you know, has been so much abundant. I could uh, met the, these people, uh, Dr. Romhale and the, uh, Dr. E. You know. And this is my pastor in Oxford, uh, Professor Jilson. I always talk about you know, a lot of things. I don't care about uh, speaking uh, like American or Japanese, I mean the English, British English. I think we now, Japanese student, well, we should be encouraged to speak our own language. Even the accent, you know, Japanese English would be okay. And finally, in conclusion, and I will say that education is what remains after you have forgotten what you have learned in school. I think, I think that's a very important comment. And the final comment I'd like to say is that Dominus Illuminatio Mea. And so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Okay, this is the Oxford motto, okay? That's it. Uh, thank you for your uh, kind attention. You know, yep. Okay, sorry. Yep. Uh, thank you.